Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining this webinar today presented by the WHA Virtual Library. I'm Tyler Ostapik, a librarian with the WHA Virtual Library. And today we're going to be looking at the pharmaceutical resource CPS. The session is being recorded. The recording as well as a copy of the slides will be shared with you after the presentation. If you have questions, you can use the Q&A option at the bottom of your screen. Or if you'd prefer to ask a question using your mic, please hit the raise hand button and I can unmute you. Feel free to ask questions at any time, and there'll also be some time at the end for any additional questions you might have. Before we take a look at CPS, I'm going to briefly mention the WRHA virtual library services available to you. Then I'm going to describe the concept of a drug monograph. I'll explain the main content of CPS and some of its uses, and then I'll demo some of the tools and features in CPS. If you're a WHA staff from an eligible community health agency or from an eligible personal care home, you have a number of electronic resources and library services available to you through the WHA Virtual Library. This includes access to a number of different information tools and resources, as well as literature searches, document delivery, and education and training sessions. You might already be familiar with drug monographs, but I thought I would just briefly explain what they are because I'll be using the term frequently throughout the rest of the webinar. Health Canada des describes a monograph in this context as a factual scientific document on a drug product that, devoid of promotional material, describes the properties, claims, indications, and conditions of use of the drug, and contains any other information that may be required for optimal, safe, and effective use of the drug. A drug monograph will usually include information concerning the name of the drug, its therapeutic or pharmaceutical classification, its actions and or clinical pharmacology, its indications and additional information. Now that we've established what a drug monograph is, I can introduce CPS. CPS is an evidence-based point of care product available from the Canadian Pharmacists Association. It provides healthcare professionals with access to evidence-based reliable Canadian drug and therapeutic information, including monographs for a number of Canadian drug products. Prior to spring 2021, CPS was known as RXTX. The content in CPS is extensively reviewed and validated by clinical experts to ensure accuracy and prevent bias. There are also weekly updates to CPS to ensure users have the most up-to-date information. The main content of CPS includes the Compendium of Pharmaceuticals and Specialties. This resource contains over 1,000 monographs for drugs, vaccines, and natural health products, developed by drug manufacturers and approved by Health Canada. It also includes over 150 monographs written by the Canadian Pharmacists Association's editorial staff and reviewed by clinical experts. Another resource within CPS, the Compendium of Therapeutic Choices, includes clinical information for more than 200 common medical conditions. The Compendium of Therapeutics for Minor Ailments contains evidence for managing and triaging minor ailments covering the full spectrum of therapy for over 140 conditions. And lastly, the Compendium of Products for Minor Ailments is a compilation of non-prescription drugs and devices marketed in Canada to help healthcare practitioners select treatments for the management of minor ailments. I'll be showing you all of these in a bit more detail later on. Along with the primary content I just mentioned, CPS also includes a number of additional features and tools, including critical updates such as warnings, advisories, and drug shortages, clin info topics, which provide information on specific topics such as nutritional supplements, immunization, and pregnancy and breastfeeding. It also includes renal function calculator and body surface area and body weight calculator tools. It includes Lexi Interact, which is an evidence-based drug and herbal interaction analysis tool. And lastly, it includes a pill identifier tool, which can be used to identify specific drugs based on their appearance and physical characteristics. You can access CPS from the WHA Virtual Library website through our pharmacy toolkit. So just from the website homepage here under resources, you can click on pharmacy or all toolkits and then click on pharmacy. And CPS is the second option from the top on the left here. When you open CPS, you'll see a pretty simple homepage. And I'll click through to open it now. So I'll go 
I'll be going into a bit more detail about all of these links later on, but there are some links to various tools and resources right on the homepage. You can also use the drop down tabs at the top to navigate to specific tools and resources. There's a search bar on the homepage that you can use to search for specific drug or conditions. So for example, you can search for antihistamine. On the results page here, you'll see a symbol beside each result. And there's a legend to tell you what these symbols mean. You also notice that your search term is highlighted in the results. You can toggle that on or off on the right hand side here. And you can also collapse all of the additional information if you want to quickly skim through your entire list of results. And we can turn that back on. On the left hand side, you can limit to specific resources and they're grouped under drugs or conditions. You can also search by just the drugs resources or the conditions resources at the top here. When you click on a particular drug, it will bring up a separate tab with information for this drug. And this may be a bit different than what you're used to. For example, if we hit the back button here, it actually brings us back to the WHA virtual library website instead of bringing us back to our search results. And that's because of this tab-based navigation system that CPS uses. So if we want to go back to our search results, instead we need to click on the results button. And you can also navigate back to the homepage that way. If you click on another drug, for example, it will open a separate tab and keep this tab open. If we're no longer interested in this information, we can click on the little X to close it. Now, an important thing to mention is that if I conduct another search here, so if I look for corticosteroids, for example, it will overwrite my previous search. So that's just something to keep in mind that if you conduct a new search, it will replace your old search and you'll lose whatever it was you were searching for. As I mentioned, you can use this filter to limit to specific drugs or conditions resources. And now that you have a general idea of how to select specific resources and search for specific drugs and conditions, I'm going to discuss each resource in a bit more detail. The first resource I'm going to discuss are the drug monographs, also known as the Compendium of Pharmaceuticals and Specialties. And you can access the drug monographs by clicking on Drugs and Conditions, Drug Monographs. You can browse through this alphabetical list to look for a drug of interest. Or if you're interested in a specific ingredient, you can use this generic index. So for example, if we're interested in drugs that contained acetaminophen, we could scroll down and open this acetaminophen. And we see there are 15 drug monographs for different drugs that contain acetaminophen. You can also search for monographs on a specific drug or ingredient. So for example, we could search for ibuprofen. And then on the left-hand side here, we can limit to monographs and just make sure conditions are unchecked. And here we have a set of all of the different drug monographs for drugs that contain ibuprofen. For another example, we can look for a specific drug name. So we can search for Advil. And then we have Advil nighttime, you can see is the top result. When you open a drug monograph, you'll see any important messages or notices at the top. Under the messages, you'll see the name of the drug its active ingredients, its classification, the manufacturer name, and the drug identification number. You'll, go, you'll also get an indication of when the monograph was last prepared or updated. So you can see this one is fairly old. It was prepared in 2011 and hasn't been revised since then. You can use the options on the left-hand side to navigate to a particular section. The summary product information summarizes administration and dosage details. If the monograph is for a type of drug rather than a specific drug, the specific drugs available will be listed in the section. Next, indications and clinical use are included, followed by contraindications, warnings and precautions, and adverse reactions. Recommended dose and overdosage information are also included, as well as a de detailed description of the mechanisms of the drug, how it should be stored and handled, and the composition and packaging. Drug monographs may also include a patient information page or leaflet, which can be provided to patients who will be taking the drug. And you can find that information here. 
You see it opens a separate tab, so this can easily be printed or shared with the patient. Not all of the information we saw in this monograph is provided in every drug monograph. The amount of information available can differ. This monograph was written by the manufacturer, and you can see the manufacturer's name at the top here. But as I mentioned earlier, some are written by the Canadian Pharmacists Association. And you'll notice that if I search, for example, corticosteroid, in the results page here, it lets you know this is a CPHA monograph. When we click through, there's a little symbol at the top to let us know, as well as a note indicating this is a CPHA monograph. The monographs in general are fairly similar to the monographs written by the manufacturer. A lot of the content on the left-hand side that you can see here is the same as we saw in the previous monograph. As you've seen, these monographs can be useful if you're interested in finding more information about a specific drug. But if you're interested in looking at the different options available for a specific condition, using the drug monographs alone could be very time consuming as you would have to search out all of the various monographs and sort of skim through them to find information on the condition. The next resource we're going to look at, the Compendium of Therapeutic Choices, allows you to more easily compare different therapeutic options for a single condition. The Therapeutic Choices can be found under the Drugs and Conditions tab, Therapeutic Choices. And for this resource, you can browse alphabetically or by body system. We can also conduct a search for a specific condition. So for example, we can look for arthritis. And then on the left-hand side here, we can limit it to therapeutic choices. And we see the top result is an entry for rheumatoid arthritis in therapeutic choices. The therapeutic choices will include details, including a brief description of the condition, goals of the therapy, investigation, both pharmacologic and non-pharmacologic options for treatment, it may also include info related to pregnancy and breastfeeding and other therapeutic tips. The algorithm section includes tools for management, screening, and diagnosis. And near the bottom, the drug table is one of the most useful sections. It'll give you an indication of the various drugs available for therapy. And depending on the information available and appropriateness, it can provide details on the cost, onset, peak, duration, dosage, monitoring, adverse effects, drug interactions, and any other useful info concerning the drug. In cases where there is a monograph for a particular drug, there will be a link to the detailed monograph for that drug. So as we can see in the table here, all of these blue links link to specific drug monographs. So this table offers a great way of comparing various treatment options for a single condition. The next resource we're going to look at is very similar, but is focused more on everyday ailments rather than more serious health conditions. And this resource is called Therapeutic Choices for Minor Ailments. So similar to Therapeutic Choices, when we go to Drug and Conditions, Minor Ailments, you can see we can browse alphabetically or by body system. You can also limit your search to minor ailments. So for example, we can look for cold sores, and then click on minor ailments on the left here and make sure everything else is unchecked. And at the top, you can see there's an entry for cold sores in minor ailments. As I mentioned, most of the sections in minor ailments are fairly similar to those of therapeutic choices, although there's more generally more patient information advice included in this resource. Like the drug table in therapeutic choices, the drug tables for minor ailments can include cost, dosage, and other information concerning drugs for the specific ailment. The last section includes information for the patient related to the specific ailment, and we can click through to get to the patient information so we could print it out or share it with the patient. If you are just interested in information for the patient related to a minor ailment, you can also conduct a search and then limit to this option at the bottom here, minor ailments information for patients. And if we click on the result, this will bring us to the same page that the other link brought us to. So it's an easier way to get to that patient information. The next resource I'm going to discuss also has to do with minor ailments, but is specifically focused on non-prescription drugs and devices for minor ailments. Like the other primary resources in CPS, you can find products for minor ailments under the Drugs and Conditions tab. 
And you can browse alphabetic, alphabetically for a specific product. They are organized by both type of product and condition. So for example, you can browse for skincare products or berry care products, but also incontinence products or diabetes products. You can also search for a specific product or condition and limit to products for many ailments. So for example, we could search for insulin and then we can limit it to products for minor ailments on the left-hand side here. And you can see there's an entry in product for minor ailments for diabetes products. Each entry contains a table with specific relevant information for the type of product. So for example, for nutrition products, it may include calorie information. For insulin products, which you can see here, it includes insulin type and delivery device. For allergy products, and it may include, for example, active ingredients. Generally, a manufacturer column will be included, and there will also be links to relevant drug monographs if they're available. And they're the blue links here. If we click on this, you can see it opens the monograph for that particular drug. And this is the last of the primary resources for CPS, but there are a number of additional tools and features within CPS that may be of use to you. The first feature we're going to look at are the updates and advisories. You can find these on the right-hand side of the homepage here or under the various tabs. What's new is found under the drugs and conditions tab. You can see what's new is here as well. And this provides a list of new products as well as products with major changes recently in CPS. You can view the full table by clicking on this link and you can search for a specific drug if you want to. And it lets you know the date it was updated. If we click through, we can see here that this was updated very recently, June 13th, and that's why it was included in the What's New list. Health Can advisories are found under the Resources tab. You can search the list for advisories for specific products. So for example, we could search for tamoxifen. And you can see here that there's a Health Canada update on the tamoxifen shortage. If we click on this more link, it should bring us to the Health Canada website where we can see the full advisory and get more information about the notice. These notices are also included at the top of the drug monographs. So if we search for tamoxifen and then click on monographs, you can see there's a drug here, Novadex, that contains tamoxifen. And when we open the monograph, you can see at the top, there's a Health Canada advisory. And this is the same advisory we found through the separate Health Canada advisory resource. And if we click on this more button, it will bring us to the Health Canada page that talks about the shortage. CPS notifications can also be found on the home page which you can see here, or they can be found under the resources tab. And these are manufacturer developed clinically relevant information on drug products. You can search for a specific drug. Oh, and sometimes there's a bit of an issue with my cookies getting into this tool, but you can sort of see in the background that you can search for a specific drug. You can filter by manufacturer. And clicking on the little icon here will bring up the information that was provided by the manufacturer related to that specific drug. These are also included at the top of the drug monographs. So if we look for Traceba, for example, at the top, you can see there's a link to the CPS notification. So you could go there to find out more information about what the manufacturer said about this drug. The next feature, ClinInfo Topics, provides quick reference information for healthcare professionals on topics related to pharmaceuticals, such as immunization and drug use during pregnancy. You can browse by selecting ClinInfo Topics under the Drugs and Conditions tab, or you can also conduct a search. So for example, we could search for pregnancy and then limit to ClinInfo Topics under the Drugs category. And you can see here, there's a topic for drug use during pregnancy. There are sections on the left-hand side for this one that you can navigate to, but depending on the topic, there may not be separate sections. There's no, there aren't consistent sections like there are for the drug monographs. To show you another example, we could look at immunization. 
And you can see there's a topic on immunization resources. And some of the topics may include additional links to drug monographs, but not all of them will. In this case, there's a table with links to the various monographs for different vaccines. There are also a couple of ClinInfo tools found on the homepage under the tools dropdown. So at the bottom here, the first one we're going to look at is drug administration food. And you can also find it under the tools tab at the top here. This tool allows you to create a custom table for a patient based on their drug regimen. So for example, you could look for acetaminophen, say the patient was taking apropidant and bethenicol. You can see the tool then generates this table below that tells you how each drug should be administered, whether it should be administered with food. And then there's a legend underneath that gives you more information about what each of these terms mean. You can see for apropitant, it suggests that we consult the drug administration and grapefruit tool, and I'll be showing that tool in a minute. And you can see for bethenicol, it says to avoid taking it with meals. So the comments column can provide additional information that can't be provided using one of the terms that are in the legend here. To look at another example, we could look at ibuprofen. And you can see for the, the case of ibuprofen, it says to take it with or after meals because food decreases the GI side effects. Now there's a similar tool for drug administration and grapefruit, which can also be found under the tools tab. And this is due to, to the effect grapefruit can have on drug absorption. It's important to make note of this message at the top that indicates not all drugs in this tool or not, not all drugs that interact with grapefruit are included in this tool. So just because you search for a drug and it doesn't appear here doesn't mean it's fine to take with grapefruit. But keeping that in mind, you can search for specific drugs, and there are quite a few included in this tool. So we search for apropitant and abrutinib. You can see here it tells you the effect of grapefruit for each drug, as well as how to manage cases where one of the drugs was ingested with grapefruit. Another set of useful tools in CPS are the renal function and body surface area and body weight calculators. Links to these tools can be found in the clinical tools box on the homepage here or under the tools tab. The body surface area and body weight calculator can be used to assist with determining the correct dosage for an individual based on their sex, weight, and height. And the renal function calculator can be used to estimate renal function in adults. The next tool we'll be looking at is Lexi Interact. Lexi Interact provides evidence-based information on interactions between medications, herbs, and allergies. It can be used to analyze drug-to-drug, drug-to-allergy, and duplicate therapy interactions. And you can access Lexi Interact from the homepage on the bottom left-hand side here or under the Tools tab. Now, there's an important note at the top of the page that indicates the information found in Lexi Interact may differ from that in the Health Canada approved monographs in CPS. That's something to keep in mind. Generally, you want to consult the drug monographs in CPS along with Lexi Interact if you can, just to make sure you're getting as much information as possible. If we want to examine the interaction between, between two different drugs, we can put them in here. So for example, we could put in Advil and Bayer Aspirin. And then just click on Analyze. You can see here it gives you a rating for the interaction, and there's a legend at the top. So in this case, for these two drugs, it says to consider therapy modification. If we click on the link, it gives us more information, including the risk rating, the severity, as well as the reliability rating. The reliability rating can be excellent, good, fair, or poor, and it just tells you how reliable the evidence is to support the risk rating. You can see there's also additional information, including a discussion of the interaction, as well as references in case you want to follow up to verify how serious the risk is. For drug to allergy interactions, you can enter the type of allergy. So for example, we could enter codeine. 
And then we could enter specific drugs. So for example, Triatech, and we could analyze. And this, in this case, you can see it recommends not prescribing this drug if somebody has this allergy. And if we click through, we can find out more information. In this case, there isn't a reliability rating like we saw for the drug to drug interaction, but there is a discussion of the interaction and additional references that might be useful. I forgot to mention earlier that if you search for a specific drug and click on that drug, you can also get a full list of all of the interactions with different drugs, which could, which could potentially be very useful. We could look at another allergy interaction. So for example, lactose intolerance and Advair, which is an inhaler medication and click on analyze. And then you can see here again, it recommends that this drug not be used if somebody is lactose intolerant because it contains milk related compounds. The duplicate drug therapy feature indicates whether selected medications are considered duplicate therapies because they belong to the same pharmacologic class. So for example, we can look at Advil and Motrin PM. And just make sure this duplicate drug therapy is checked off. And you can see there's a little flag here to indicate it's a duplicate therapy. It doesn't provide additional details or an explanation of interaction, but it can flag potential issues with a person's drug regimen. The last tool we're going to look at is the pill identifier. This can be used to identify a drug product based on its characteristics. I think this is a really cool and potentially very handy tool. It could be really helpful if an individual taking medication doesn't remember what it's called or what it was prescribed for, and you want to find out what the drug is, you can access it from the home page on the bottom right here, or under the tools tab, pill identifier, which is right at the top. The characteristics include the brand name, the imprint, the dosage form, the shape, color, and whether the pill is scored. And you can search for brand names. So for example, you could search for gravel, and say we had this pill here, we could limit it to orange. Now you might've noticed that there are two pills that sort of appeared orange, but only one ends up in the results here. And that's because the colors are very specific. So if we select peach as well, then both appear. So that's just something to keep in mind to try to be broad in your color selection if you're narrowing things down so you don't miss the pill you're looking for. And if we were, Trying to find more information about this pill or limit res our results, we can see there's a five zero on it. So we could, for example, put five zero in for the imprint and click search. And this narrows it down to the one pill. We can click on details for more information. Gravel is maybe not the best example of sort of the power of this tool, because as you can see, all of these gravel pills have gravel imprinted on them. So it would probably be pretty easy for people to identify if they had one of these pills that they were gravel pills. But say, for example, somebody had this Xanax pill and they couldn't make out the imprint or it was worn off. We could identify it based on its very various characteristics. So we could look for, I saw the pill was oval, it was purple, and I think it had some scoring. And you can see by using the various characteristics, you can very quickly narrow it down to find the pill you're looking for. And then if we click on details, we can find out more information about the drug. And you can actually click through to view the full product monograph. So this, I think, is a great tool for identifying certain drugs if the individual has a pill, but they're not sure what it was prescribed for. This is the perfect resource for finding out more information. And those are the main features and tools in CPS. I've been demoing the desktop version, but there's also a mobile app available. It doesn't offer all the same content, but as you can see from this table, it does contain quite a few of the main CPS resources. You can access it from the WHA Virtual Library homepage under Resources, All Apps and Tools. And then under the drug section here, you can see the section second option is CPS mobile. When you click on the link, it will bring you to this page. 
And you just need to copy this code and then click on this link here. And then paste in the organization code and you'll be able to register for an account. And then once you have a username and password, you can use that to access the mobile app. Now that you've seen some of the benefits of CPS, I thought I should quickly mention a couple of its limitations. One of the limitations is its potential for bias. Because monographs are written by drug manufacturers, there's potential for some of the information to be biased. However, these monographs are reviewed by CPHA editors and approved by Health Canada, so the information they contain can be considered relatively reliable. Regarding CPHA monographs and other content such as clinic info topics, CPHA does say they do not accept funding from manufacturers for their content and ask all authors to disclose potential conflicts of interest. Another limitation of CPS is its scope. Because CPS focuses on products available in Canada, it's not comprehensive and may not have the information you need concerning a specific drug. Even with its focus on just Canadian products, CPS is also not an exhaustive list of all drug products available in Canada. Information concerning each product is also not necessarily exhaustive. Other sources may contain additional information for the safe use of a product. Despite these limitations, CPS can potentially be a really useful resource, and I hope you feel better equipped to use it in the future. Thank you for attending today, and I encourage you to sign up for future webinars that might be of interest. Both the slides and a recording of this presentation will be shared with you in the next few days. If you have any questions, please add them to the chat or feel free to send me an email. I'll stick around for a bit to see if there are any questions, and thanks again.